What's good everybody? For those of you guys who are new to my channel, my name is Sydney Baker Green. I'm an international photographer and cinematographer, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to stabilize footage in DaVinci Resolve. So you can see here that we have a clip that is handheld in a moving car. So because of the movement of the car, the clip is naturally a little shaky. The nice thing about DaVinci Resolve is that it enables us to stabilize our footage in a very simple method. To get to the stabilization panel in Resolve, simply click the inspector icon and then scroll down in your inspector menu till you get to stabilization. If it's not open, simply double click it and it should pop up. Before we stabilize our footage, let's break down the stabilization menu. You can see here we have modes, and the modes are perspective, similarity, and translation. These are simply different algorithms DaVinci Resolve uses to stabilize your footage. I like to think of perspective as the warp stabilizer that you could find in Premiere Pro or Adobe After Effects. Similarity and translation remind me more of using the X, Y, and Z axis to stabilize your footage, kind of if you were to keyframe out your stabilization. You will notice here that we also have a camera lock and zoom feature. Camera lock is simply a tripod stabilization mode. It is going to try to eliminate all of the movement in your footage. This works pretty well on shots that are already stable. You can see here that when we click camera lock, it eliminates all of our other options because it is going to eliminate all of that movement. Stabilizing in DaVinci Resolve is simply trying to smooth out that movement, kind of give it a steady cam feel or a gimbal feel if possible. The zoom feature tells the program to zoom in on the image to get rid of any black bars that may appear from the translations of the image that happen because of the algorithm stabilizing the footage. I always leave this option on, but note that you can manually zoom in after the stabilization is done. Cropping ratio lets the computer know how much cropping it is allowed to do. The higher the number, the less cropping, and the lower the number, the more cropping. The more you have it cropped in, the smoother the stabilization is going to be. So for this example, we're gonna leave it at 0.25. Smooth determines how smooth we want those camera movements to be. Now remember, we're not removing all of the handheld movements from the shot. We're simply going to be smoothing them out. So I'm gonna leave it here for default to see what kind of look we get so far, and then we can adjust it if we need to later. And strength just lets the computer know how strong you want the stabilization to be. By default, it is already set to the maximum strength because it's assumed that if you're going to stabilize your footage, you're going to want the most powerful stabilization you can get. Let's go ahead and start with perspective mode with the settings we have and click stabilize. Now you'll notice that you'll see a progress bar here. I want you to also note that if we make another change to any of these settings, we're going to have to hit the stabilize button again. So here we see that it's zoomed in quite a bit, but we also get some artifacts. You can kind of see the jitteriness right here. So we, we're not gonna want that. Well, now let's go in and let's use translation instead. We're gonna leave all of our settings the same, except I'm gonna smooth it out just a bit more and I'm gonna hit stabilize again and the computer is going to reanalyze our footage. This is the beauty about having different stabilization modes. If one doesn't work, you can use a different stabilization mode to try to get a desired effect. And now we can see here that we have a much more stable image with less artifacts, and this is something that you can definitely pull off in the final product of your film, and most people will not even notice any of the slight jitters you may get from stabilizing your image. Only you'll notice them because you're the one who has stabilized the footage. So a quick before and after, you can see just how awesome and how powerful the stabilization feature is in DaVinci Resolve. And if you don't get the desired effect the first time, all you have to do is change the stabilization mode. If you guys like the way that this information was presented straightforward, quick and to the point, and want more information on the color grading aspect of this industry standard color platform, be sure to head to shopsydneybg.com. There you can download my DaVinci Resolve color grading course, which is going to take you through all the industry secrets I've learned to achieve perfect skin tones, as well as cinematic color grades that allow you to venture outside of teal and orange. And we also talk about the pre-production side 
being a director or a solo shooter, how you can make sure your set is conducive to the best color possible when you get into post-production. If you guys like this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications. Follow me on my social media. The links are in the description down below, as well as the YouTube fam. Their links are also in the description down below. Remember, if you are ever feeling uninspired, uncreative, or just want to give up on this whole creative journey, every day, airplanes take off against the wind. Live, love, laugh, stay inspired, and as always, stay fabulous. My name is Sydney, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out.